don't live so long Then why is the story hanging round Why do people stop to pray To a man that's dead and gone When I ask him what he say He's coming back to take me home Anybody here wanna live forever? Say I do Anybody here wanna walk on golden streets? Say I do Anybody here sick and tired of living like you do? Anybody here want a home with love forever? Say I do. And they say you'll never know till you walk up to that man. Look into his eyes of love. And touch the nail scars in his hand And if you can walk away Knowing that he died for you Then I guess I'll have to Thanks. say I guess he can die for you
Good morning, everyone. Give this orchestra a good hand for all that good music. Let's recognize them, yes. Ida, Tommy, uh, Frida, and Brother David back here on guitar. So good to have all of you. The Lord has sent some good instruments, and he sent some good instrumentalists to play those for us. Now that you're comfortable in your seat, let's all stand together. Isn't that torture? We're going to sing the chorus out of the book. It's actually a song on page 204. 204. We won't have the words on our screen this morning, so you'll need to get close to a hymn book. But we'll just sing the chorus, and you probably recognize the tune already. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Again, please turn. These instruments, as I said earlier, and instrumentalists are so good, I don't really like to ask them not to play. But if they will this time, let's sing that chorus with our natural voices that God gave us, and that'll give them a chance to easier to sing along with us also. Sing for everybody out there that's listening to you as a mass choir. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Before you're seated, let's welcome First Lady Sister Pat Clemens. You may be seated. You may be seated except for the choir. Sister Pat brought her husband, the pastor, with us this morning, with her. And they have Mia and they have our sweet Miss Darla with them this morning also. As this wonderful choir sings together, we're singing this morning about our amazing God. And he is so amazing. Every morning when he wakes me up, I realize how amazing that is. But he did give me a good night's sleep. And uh, for our choir, we will have rehearsal this afternoon. So if you'd like to join us, the hard part is just for you to be here. Be here about a minute before 5 o'clock. And uh, hopefully I can make it also. But you're welcome to be a part of this choir. Listen as we minister this morning.
That is very good. Let's all stand together and sing number 452 in the hymnal. 452. My Savior's love. As this part of the choir comes down to join. And thank you, choir. That was very good. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how But sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. And we'll skip to the fifth verse. We leave this off a lot of times. These words are great. When with the ransomed in glory His face I at last shall see T'will be my joy through the ages To sing of His love for me As you're being seated, say welcome to someone. Welcome to someone. Yes, you're supposed to repeat that. Oh, that is fantastic. Thank you again, choir. That was so good. Remember, 5 o'clock this afternoon. Other announcements would just be our regular services, as far as I know. Uh, tonight, choir at 5, church at 6, right here in this building. And then Wednesday evening, we have 6 o'clock Bible study hour for different groups in different places, some men and some ladies. Diff a lot of different things going on Wednesday at 6, so you be here. And then at 7, we have our prayer time and a little bit of worship and a lot of Bible study. And then we go pray some more. We just do a lot of things on Wednesday evening also. So we invite you to be a part of that. And for those of you who are faithful and regulars, we thank you for that also. And I said it earlier, but I want to make sure, welcome to everyone on this side of the camera and on the other side of the camera to our service this morning. It is so good to see you. And now we have some fantastic, handsome ushers that want to come down. They did not pay me to say that. If you would, raise your hand if you're here for the first time or maybe the first time in a long time so these gentlemen can see you. They want to give you a card and a pen. That card, use the pen to fill out the card so that we may read it and uh, use it as a way of communicating with you. The pen is yours to keep. It has our phone number and church name on it so you can communicate with us. And. Uh, a little commercial, I guess. A lot of people are worried about putting their names on anything today. We do not sell those names to anyone. <laughs> we don't make money off of that. I know you have some uh, special needs and special friends maybe, but uh, I don't want to embarrass them or myself by saying it improperly, but I met this young man several years ago as a fellow employee with Tampa Electric Company, and I was surprised to see him come in this morning because I knew they were active in other churches everywhere, and uh, Brother Quentin has had to go, but he also knows this young man. Brother Shirley, would you raise your hand up so that they can see you and your lovely wife is with you? I, 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 good to have you, folks.
course, I'm the outsider. I probably live 25 miles up the road here, so all of you may know these people better than I do. So I have to be careful, but okay. All right, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Pastor Clemens, yes, yeah. sir, please could, come up. Could I just interrupt just a few moments? No. Um, <laughs> he asked a question. We're going to have prayer time, and yeah. uh, we have a young man here uh, in our church this morning. Riley, would you stand, son? Riley, in a fishing accident, lost his sight in his eye. And they're going to a specialist this week and uh, hopefully to be able to do something to correct and get vision back. So when we go to prayer right now, let's remember Riley uh, in our prayers that God will give him a, a doctor that, with the guidance and the skill and the wisdom and put a touch of God upon him to heal that eye so that this young man can have sight in both eyes. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you. And we're thankful, Lord, we have you to come to. And Lord, I pray for this young man. God, he out enjoying life, fishing. Lord, in this accident, you know all about it. And we pray, dear Lord, for healing to his eye, that you'd return the sight, your God, and Give the medical doctors the wisdom, the skills, Lord, whatever, but Lord, your will be done, but we ask you to touch him and to heal him. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mel. Thank you, Pastor, for doing that. Yes, and we will be praying for him and his family and those caregivers. A couple of other things in the way of announcements that I failed to say earlier is please take the bulletin that you were given this morning as you came in. Uh, beautiful picture, uh, just a lot of fantastic information on the inside. And if you don't have yours, I'll hold mine here so you can read it. Everybody got it? Some of you have photographic minds and memories, so you can do that. But seriously, take that home with you. Don't read it during the service this morning, or especially during the preaching time, because you want to pay attention to pastor. Also, there's an insert in that program this morning Everybody talks too. about a uh, baby shower and the information's on there and for those outside that's our sister Beverly Landis expecting a little girl and this uh, fellowship time is June the 9th at 1 p.m. in our church fellowship hall Nine and I know you can read that but I wanted to make sure everyone outside knew 19th. that also 19 19 yeah. what did I say Sorry. <laughs> you can tell I'm not all here this morning. I'm not sure where I am, but I'm not all here. Part of me is here. I want to take time also. It was brought to my attention as I came in earlier, and I don't know if I can do this or not, but I want to say thank you, Donna. Yes. The flower lady, I call her. Yes. Yes, give her a hand. <laughs> What was the name of those flowers you told me about as I came in? The name of the flower? All, all of the white carnations and all of the arrangements your family made for yours and Annalene's 50th wedding anniversary. Thank you, thank you. That's amazing in a lot of ways because that was almost three years ago <laughs> or so. Been a long time, hasn't yeah. it, Pastor, since we had that crazy wedding on this stage? <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. If you've seen those pictures, you'll know what I mean. I know I ask you to do a lot of different things like stand up and sit down, but it's good for me to stand up and sing. So let's stand together as we sing another hymn. Those words in your book are on page 463, 463, and we'll all sing together the first two verses, and while we're singing those, we have Brother Mark Kay coming down front. He's going to get ready to sing for us. Who can cheer the heart? 
are like Jesus by his presence all I'll tell you what I'm like again. so freely given, grace of God beyond decree, mercy higher than the heaven, deeper than the deepest sea, all oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus, he is more than life to be seated as we're praying for Brother Mark as he ministers in music. Thank you, Mark. Sing it, brother. Good morning, church. I, got a, I see a nice balance here. Very, very good. I like that. Anyway, this song is uh, it's kind of, it's a very powerful song. Very great message in it. Reba McIntyre made a very popular and the name of the song is Back to God. That's where we all need to go. Back to God. Sponsor. Amen. Yeah. This whole country. Listen to the lyrics. You 
gotta get down on your knees, Billy. Fold your hands and beg and plead. Keep on praying. You gotta cry, rain, tears, or faint. Found the floor and scream and stay. Cause we're still worth saving. Can you go on like this? Love like this, you can hope the best, make a wish. The only answer is we've got to give this world back to God. Oh, give it back, back to God. Back to God. Thank you, Mark. Father, we come to you now saying thank you for loving us. Thank you for drawing us as you have through the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. Thank you for allowing us to come into your house to speak to you personally this morning. Thank you for those who do play the instruments here. Thank you for the choir, the musicians, all the technicians, all the workers around the building that keep it clean and the yards clean. Jesus, we thank you for each of these things as it comes together to help us sense your presence and to worship and to honor you and to give you glory as we want to this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And part of that prayer is for our pastor. I kind of kid with him a little bit when we're on stage here, but I've learned to love him as a Christian as an example of a Christian man, and what a pastor. Welcome Pastor Clemens to church this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I'm the privileged one. I appreciate all of you coming and being here today. What a great crowd today. Amen. Good to see you. Thank you for coming and being a part. Some of you may be wondering what where Brother Buddy is. I just needed a little break. So I sent him to Alabama with his wife. <laughs> but uh, he'll be back by next week. And uh, we do miss Janet and Buddy when they're not here. Tremendous addition to our church, a great part of our church. And um, but uh, Chase, you was wondering where they are. Uh, that's the, that's the storyline. And uh, But anyway, also, if you noticed on the back of your bulletin, um, a Homes for Heroes, one of our families... The Westervolts, John and Teresa Westervolt, their son, um, Sergeant um, Patrick Booth, their son-in-law, um, is receiving, I'm ringing a little bit up here, they're re receiving a home from Heroes and uh, will be presented to them on Wednesday, June the 9th. Um, if you have opportunity, you may want to go by and just congratulate them on their new home. And I want to thank the Tui's for helping make that possible. Thank you again so much for coming and being a part of our service today. It's always good to have visitors. Appreciate that so much. You're always welcome here. And um, I'm glad we have a great warm church, warm and friendly church. Amen. This morning, kind of a follow-up in some ways, to the Bible lesson and study of Wednesday night, talking about the Holy Spirit and how God deals with us today. I've entitled the message, The Temple of God. The word temple or tabernacle is defined as a place where God dwells. And in the Old Testament, it was a 
tent, a room within the tent called the Holy of Holies. And there the priest would go into the Holy of Holies and pray and make a sacrificial offering to God for the sins of the people. As they had come and brought their sacrifices and offering to the Lord, only the priest was allowed to go in this very special place within the tabernacle for to make appearance before God and to offer up the prayers for all of the people who have come and offered their sacrifices unto the Lord. So the presence of God was in that place, and it was called the Holy of Holies within the special, and most of the time it was a tent because they moved from place to place, the children of Israel. And, um, but in within the confines of a, that tent was a special room, and that is what I'm speaking of right now, called the Holy of Holies. It was a way for, it was that way for over 4,000 years. Think about that of time. When God was dealing with mankind for about 4,000 years, God had a special place. He had a, a special anointed priest. And he alone was allowed to go into the presence of Almighty God and to make prayers for God's people. But something happened on Calvary. On Matthew chapter number 27, they would have, in that tent, there was a big curtain there that separated one room from the other. No one was allowed to go in, as I mentioned, except the priest to make those prayers. He was the only one. And by way of instruction, if the priest had not cleansed himself properly, before he went into that special meeting with God, in the presence of God, they always tied a rope around the ankle, the leg of the priest, just in case he had not prepared himself properly to enter into the presence of God, he would die in that room, in the Holy of Holies. And they would have a way of dragging him out by the rope. And they could pull him out, that dead body, just in case he had not prepared himself to be in the presence of Almighty God. I'm looking for some volunteers this morning to go into that room to be a and uh, we'll, I've got a rope over here. We can tie it to your ankle. I didn't see any hands. But most of us would be very fearful, wouldn't we? To think of knowing the conditions. But it was all there to help us be reminded the seriousness. The seriousness of being in the presence of God. The seriousness of us as Christians, making sure that our lives are clean and pure before the Lord. But something happened when Jesus was crucified. And I want to talk about that a little bit this morning. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 27, verses 50 and 51, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, just before he took his last breath, everything had been completed. He had done everything that the law demanded for redemption, for the payment of our sin debt. Once it was all completed, everything that God required for the forgiveness of sin, the Bible said that Jesus said it is finished. 
When he has spoke those words, it is finished. It's done. Father, I've done everything that you have asked me to do. I have died for the sins of the people. I have paid the sin debt. Once that happened, he breathed his last breath and went, went back to be with the Father. Look at these words. Look what happened at that instant in time because it affect how we worship today. Everything changed 2,000 plus years ago. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, he lifted up, he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple that I was speaking to you about a moment ago, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. God himself ripped that curtain down. No longer was there a barrier between man and God. Because now, after that, every one of us, as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, become a priest, we now have a right as Christians, because we're priests, to go into the presence of Almighty God. But look what happened. Man didn't rip that veil down, that curtain down. God Almighty did it. He ripped that, Bible said he ripped it the top to the bottom. And here's something else that I was noticing as I was reading that. The Bible said the whole world shook. Not just a little place in Jerusalem. Now there's earthquakes and the earth shakes. But they're regional. Can you imagine? The whole world shook. Boy, that was a major event. It was the greatest event when God opened heaven and allowed man to come into the presence of Almighty God. You and I sit here today, we're so privileged, we're so blessed Amen. to be able to come directly into the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. This is not on my notes. But I'm glad that I don't serve as a priest to you, for you. You know why? I don't want to hear about your sins. I don't want to hear a thing. Listen, I got enough to deal with my own. But aren't you glad that every one of us can personally, individually, now go to God and seek His mercy, seek His grace, seek His forgiveness, on our lives, but the whole world shook. Listen, that was a major. When Jesus said it's finished, God said it's time for me to tear down the veil, tear down the separation, because now I want my children, I want my people, I want those who love me and have accepted me as their my son as their savior. I want them to be able to personally be able to come to me directly. And so God ripped down the separation. So now we live. We live in a different time, don't we? Aren't you glad you're living now and not then? I'm so glad to live in this dispensation of the New Testament. I'm so glad to know that you and I today can personally pray to God we don't have to go to someone else and ask them to pray for us. And so God, he tore down the old dwelling place because, I, I, I said because he was moving to a new dwelling place. God no longer dwells behind a curtain. The Holy Spirit now is God. The Holy Spirit, God, no longer is behind that veil. He now lives. His Bible said he tore it down as if he said, I'm moving out. And he just kind of tore everything out. He said, I'm going to a new place. You know where he was going? To live in the hearts of mankind. 
to live in my heart, to live in your heart. And so he had paid the price for a new home. I say that reverently. Jesus paid the price for a new home for God to live in, in our hearts. You're talking about new homes for heroes. The Lord Jesus Christ is our hero. And he come the moment that someone accepts Jesus as their Savior. He comes and dwells and lives in that life, in that heart, that soul of that man or that woman. And so it's a new home that God has prepared. The Holy Spirit lives within us. He lays claim upon us. Over in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, in verse 16, here the Apostle Paul says, Know ye not, don't you know, that the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you? Boy, isn't that plain? Isn't that good? Oh, I'm so glad to be able to know that, that the soul of man is where God dwells today. The Holy Spirit of God dwells today. He lives and abides within us. What a, did you realize what an honor and a privilege it is to know the Lord? Did you realize the great benefits that we have as a child of God? That God said, I'm going to come and live within you. And I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Boy, that's just, it's almost beyond human comprehension. But to think that the God that created the universe, the God that created everything, spoke it into existence. It lives within my heart and your heart even today. And so we are literally the property of God. He bought us. He owns us. He paid the debt for us. We owe him everything. Here's another verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Here again the apostle Paul says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you? That you're not your own, but you are bought with a price. Look at verse 20. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, because we've been bought and paid for. I mean, God is not on a payment plan. Salvation is not on a payment plan. You don't have to keep paying in order to keep your salvation. Amen. It's paid for. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. That's why we at Baptists believe in eternal security. Because when Jesus died, he paid the debt in full. Amen. I mean, I can't add to it or take away from it. It's done. He paid it all. When Jesus said, Father is finished, the debt was paid. Then he came and he lived. He said, therefore now, because I live within you, I want you to live for me. Well, that, that ought to hit home. The Lord said, because I live within you, I want you now to live for me. Well, that verse, for you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God, how? In your body in your life, in the way we live, in your spirit, because why? They're God, which are God. And so, Romans chapter 8 and verse 9 says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So we have a spiritual ancestry, really, that we can go back to goes all the way back to when Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus shed his blood, made the payment for our sin debt, and announced to the world and to God in heaven, he said, Father, it's finished. And the Father said, it's finished, and he ripped down the curtain and let 
you and I come into the presence of holy, the holy of holies. Do you realize how privileged we are today? Do you realize what a special honor and privilege that is? To be able to go into the presence of Almighty God, each and every one of us, personally, we don't have to ask anyone for permission. We can just enter into his presence and pray. Hey, I didn't think about this, but here's a good thought. I have to be careful when I get up here and get these <laughs> thoughts. I have to examine them real quick in my mind, make sure they're biblical. <laughs> Aren't you glad that when we go into his presence, How do I say this? Sometimes we go into God's presence and we're not real, we're not real open and honest. You know what I mean? I mean, we pretend before God like we are, oh dear God, you know I'm so good. <laughs> Lord, you know I've done so much good for you, and Lord, I know I'm a blessing to you. <laughs> Aren't you glad that? Aren't you glad that it's not like it was in the Old Testament time whenever the priest went in there with that type of garbage and he'd fall dead? Aren't you glad that it's a merciful God today that even when we go into his presence and we're not all that we ought to be and we're not as honest before God as we ought to be, he's still merciful. Amen. He's still loving. Thank God. I think every one of us can say I have gone before the Lord in prayer and there were things in my life and heart that really wasn't right. And I didn't even want to admit it to God. I kind of thought I was hiding it. I wonder how many, I don't know, the Bible doesn't tell us how many priests actually died in the Holy of Holies. But I do know this, and I have a sidebar. The Bible does tell us that as priests today, when we continually dishonor him with our bodies, he takes our life. Mm. That ought to make us think. That ought to make us wake up a little bit. It, because it's a special privilege that you and I have as Christians to be able to come into the presence of Almighty God, and we take it too lightly. We don't take it serious enough as the children of the Lord. So, he said, I'm with you. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, he said, I'm with you. Jesus said that I'm with you, I'm with you always. Well, we know Jesus went back to heaven, but the Holy Spirit came and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And he lives and dwells within us. And we have his presence. So, if you know that, I ask you the question this morning. Do you know now? Do you know at this present moment that you are the temple? That you are the temple where God is now present in your life. You see, God only dwells in a holy temple. God is holy. And God dwells within us. He wants to bring out from within us holiness to the world. He wants us to live out a life of holiness. And I cannot do it or could not do it in, unless he was living within me to help me. To empower me. The Bible says we're just, we've all sinned. The Bible says we've just, you know, I know my, I put on a pretty good front like the rest of you. Amen. Amen. 
And we all know ourselves better than anyone else knows us. And sometimes what we hide from others, God sees. Boy, how we need to realize that we are the housing, we are the place, we're the tabernacle that God dwells in. We ought, to, we ought to think of that in such a holy and special way that it, it controls every thought of our mind, every action of our life. Amen. Everywhere I go, I carry that temple that God dwells in, I carry it. He must go where I go. He must hear what I say. He must see what I do because he lives and abides and dwells within this temple and your temple. Boy, that ought to, that ought to make the life of a Christian different. That ought to make us serious about living for God and serving the Lord and being faithful in our lives. So do you know, how can someone, I ask the question, how can someone so powerful, so big, so mighty as God live in you and you not know it? I don't think that's possible. I think if a person knows the Lord, he knows that God lives within him. And he feels that presence of God all the time. Oh, that doesn't mean that we always do right. Doesn't mean that we always yield to the things that we ought to yield to. But when we don't, there's something inside and it's God, the Holy Spirit, speaking to our heart letting us know that something's not right. We call it guilt. We call it just an uneasiness of knowing that somehow, some way we've done something. Maybe we've said something that was not pleasing to God. So this morning, I ask you, do you know do you know that the Spirit of God lives and abides within you? The Bible says in Romans 8, 16, that the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are, I love that, that we are today, presently, we are now the children of God. Boy, isn't that a wonderful verse? Isn't that a wonderful thought? I am already saved and a child of God, and so are you, because he paid the debt on Calvary's cross. Because when the debt was paid, he pulled down the curtain and said, now anyone who wants to come to in can come in. I was glad there was a day in my life when I said, Lord, the curtain's down, can I come in? Lord, you pour down the curtain, and you've invited me to come in. The Holy Spirit was speaking to my heart and was drawing me, and the invitation went out for me to come in into the place where God dwelt. The Bible in the Old Testament called it the Holy of Holies. And the day that you and I accepted Christ as our Savior, we heard a voice from inside the Holy of Holies inviting us to come in. To come in and fellowship with God. To come in and let him be our Lord. Let him be our Savior. That was a wonderful day, wasn't it? Uh, when God gave you the invitation. I can still remember the day, and maybe you can too, when the invitation from the Holy Spirit of God dealt with your heart and invited you to come into what we're calling the Holy of Holies, to the presence of God. 
And when you walked into that room, you bowed on your knees as the old song said, and cried holy. Dear God, be merciful to me a sinner. And God gave us new life. God let us become a new creature, the Bible says, in Christ Jesus. The Bible says all things were passed away. Aren't you glad of that? All your old sins. I'm glad I didn't have to take my, you know, how do I make this plain and simple and quick? Isn't it nice to be able, when you move out of an old house, not to have to move anything, just leave all that junk there and go into a brand new house with brand new furniture? I had a good member of our church. He came down every winter and spent with us. He said, Brother Mike, he said, if you move your furniture three times, you might as well just have a bonfire and burn it up. <laughs> well, it's not going to be any good. But aren't you glad? Brother, when we got saved, we, did, we, took, we left that old life behind, and we now moved into a new life. We don't need that old life anymore. That old life caused <laughs> pain, heartache, misery, and that new life brought peace, joy, contentment, happiness, fulfillment. We left all that other behind when we moved in and let God come into our heart and come into our life. So I ask you this morning, do you know that you are now already a part of the temple of God. Does he live within your heart? Are you taking your burdens as a child of God to the Lord? We sing that old song. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. That's one of the great privileges and joys of being saved. We can take our problems to the Lord. Take our burdens to the Lord. And he will Give us strength and help in all of the things in life that we face. And God knows we need God's help, don't we? We need the Lord's help. But he's there to help us. He lives within our tabernacle, this new dwelling place. And for the last 2,000 plus years, God has lived in the heart and soul of mankind. The most powerful thing that ever happened, the most wonderful thing that ever happened to man, is when God came out of that behind the curtain, that holy of holies, and moved out of there and moved into our heart and into our lives. Most wonderful thing that ever happened to mankind. All because the price of our sin had been paid. The sin debt was paid. Now God can leave there and come into our heart and into our life. And that happens. Whenever we allow God permission to pay our sin debt. When we allow him to come into our heart. Allow him to come into our life. Say, Lord, pay my sin debt. Be merciful to me, a sinner. So this morning, two thoughts as I close. Isn't it wonderful to be saved? Amen. Isn't it wonderful to know the Lord? Amen. The benefits of having God always with you, never leaving us, never forsaking us. I have him there. And then I say this. If you're here today and he doesn't live in your heart, in your life, because you've never accepted him as your Savior, today could be the day that changes your life forever. Forever and ever. You have eternity to spend with God. He'll live with you now, and we'll live with him there in heaven. Do you know today? Do you know that you know the Lord? Paul said, John said, I write these things to you that you may know that you have eternal life. He that hath the Son of God hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things I write unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. The question I pose to you this morning is the same question, John.
do you know that you have eternal life? And the Holy Spirit of God now lives and abides and dwells within your heart. Would you stand with me for an invitation? Maybe today, as I give the invitation, I do it thinking about maybe you're here and things are going on in your life that you think you're maybe hid from God. Maybe it's time to open up and confess to God. God knows. Why don't we just admit what God already knows? Why don't we come and confess and say, Dear Lord, I know I'm your child. I know you died for me on the cross. I've received you as my Savior. But, Father, I've drifted. Father, I'm not living for you as I ought. Maybe today would be a great day to come and say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me, dear Lord, for being a disobedient child, for not being what you want me to be, for not living like you want me to live. Maybe the altars today would be a nice place to come, or where you are. You can pray anywhere, I know that. Secondly, maybe you're here today and you've never had the experience of God living in your life. That only happens through salvation. Would you today come and say, Brother Mac, I'd like to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'd like to be saved. I'd like to know that I'm going to heaven when I die. If you don't know that today, could I invite you to come? Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts. Lord, to all of us, that we might be so conscious of the presence of God in our life every moment, every day. And even now, at this invitation time, Lord, if there's anyone here unsaved, does not have the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ living within them, would this be a day that they would come and be saved? For Christians, maybe who've grown a little cold, a little indifferent, God, speak to our hearts. And help us to come closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brother Mel, what are we singing? Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. As he tenderly calls, will you come this morning? Jesus is tenderly calling the whole, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love will thou roll? Father and Father of ways. Are you living for the Lord? Calling Are you living for God? today. Calling today. Jesus is calling his tenderly. Another are calling today. Another verse. Another verse. Jesus is calling the weary. I just uh, thought I would share, if you see in the bulletin, your ushers will come. With your offerings and giving, the ministry of this church, listen to this, it's in the bulletin. Six different countries of the world are being touched by this ministry. 35 states within the United States, 120 cities, people in those cities are listening to this church service. And that is growing almost 
weaker. And we grow even more. We have a little problem sometimes with Facebook. <laughs> they don't like the gospel. They don't like the plain truth. But uh, the word is still getting out. And I just want to let you know that your offerings are enabling us to do that. We've, we've updated. I heard from uh, uh, Mrs. Um, oh, my goodness. I should. <laughs> <laughs> she used to sit right back here. She went to Ohio. Addie, Miss Addie. Miss Addie. I just spoke to her yesterday on the phone. She listens to the service all the time. People all over the country. It is growing and growing. Um, we will be taking on, we're going to be uh, uh, orphanages that we help to support. I think there's about seven that we're helping right now. And they're in uh, the funds to support these orphanages are getting real low. And uh, because of our giving and special giving that designated the missions, we're going to be able this month to be sending another 1000 or $2 just to help over and above what we've been doing. Um, so there, you saw it in the bulletin. I wrote about it, um, helping missionaries. And I want to thank you for giving to missions. Thank you for all that you do here. God bless you. Let's pray and give the Lord thanks. Father, thank you so much for the offerings that will come in today. Lord, to spread the gospel all over the world. We pray that you would bless it as it goes out. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we're dismissed, uh, Bill Green, bring just put your hand up here, Bill. Bill, I've known this dear man for many, many years now. And I'll tell you one thing about Bill, he loved the Lord. Yeah. And um, he was homeless at one time, alcoholic at one time. 22 years. 20 some years. But God has saved him. Amen. And I've known him now long enough to know that Brother Bill is real. And he loves God and he served God. He's been faithful. But he has a burden. And he wants to help those who used to be like him. And um, God is uh, enabling. He wants to try to reach them and, with the Bible. Uh, he wants to try to help give them some food. And he's putting a plan together to do that. And um, it's getting very close. And he's requesting that when the time comes that... Um, some of us will be able to join in. We were going to buy the Bibles. We're going to buy Bibles out of our church funds to, to give to the homeless. And um, he's going to be cooking for them and feeding and doing some things and got a location already picked out to do it. Um, so when that, it's going to be maybe another couple of weeks. But when he does, he's going to need some of us to help him a little bit. And yes, sir? No, not five. We, no. <laughs> I know Bill. You get Bill turned loose. Huh? I'll be Just speak right here, my mic. I got I got you. Okay. This way, they right here. Her offer, and I asked her, I said, You know, I'm free to own it. And I said, 
the good times, we had all of those kids going to school with. I'm married to that. <laughs> I've been around for Mr. Rod Hawk for Mr. Hawk for about 10 years. And uh, he's part of the reason I was able to do this because the man gave me reasonable rent and he tried to help people. And he's part of the reason I'm able to do this. A big part. Amen. I came back to, to uh, from here, been here for four years. I had $1,500 in my pocket. I paid Mr. Hoppy's rent. He asked me if I needed to do some work. I went to Florida and I said, no, I got it. I had 1500 in my pocket. Well, three weeks ago, <laughs> <laughs> my bank account was 6200 mm -hmm. The two stimulus checks helped. Mr. Rod Hawk being able to pay Less expensive rent. I'm, I draw 860 a month from Social Security. I was able to give my money to the church, which I do. I was able to uh, pay my rent out of that. And then I live on less than $100 because I eat leftovers five days a week. I put, cook a big pot of beans and greens <laughs> and I put them in the refrigerator. And I'm on them for about a week. You know, them restaurants will kill you. Okay. So I was able to put 300 a month in the bank. Okay. But I wouldn't be able to do it without Jesus. See, he's the old, he's the old reason. I was able to do any of this. Okay. So I saved the money. I built me a porch. Mr. Hoff allowed me to so I can cook. See, when I start this, I'm not going to stop. All right, we got to be free. I got to be able to cook every Saturday to bring the food to them. They're going to be expecting it. They should expect it. You know? And I, the food, which I'm going to give them top rate food, like chicken, nice. You know, it's dinner time. Potatoes, vegetables, you know, one night. Amen. And uh, I was originally going to feed just the homeless. But yesterday I went to Walmart and bought $147 worth of, of uh, roast beef pogies and okay. potato chips and drinks and stuff. And there were five people out there homeless running the sign. You can see I was homeless 22 years. They ain't going to tell me nothing about what they're doing. I know. They want to die for and booze and drugs. Okay. You right. see, because the people at, at uh, Murphy's, I bought the ice. I took the thing down and I asked him, I said, I want to feed the homeless. Can I set up right out here so I can rain when I get on the go? No, you can't do that around here. I said, Well, sir, you have a nice day. <laughs> I'm taking, he looked at me like I was afraid. I said, I'm taking this. I can't keep out of it. Just one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> so now what I'm going to do. Also telling everybody, if you need a meal, if you think you, you, you need a meal with a COVID, everybody's having a hard time. If you think you need a meal, come one, come all. I don't care if a thousand come. Jesus said five thousand in the world is for three days. And if I can't do that, I'm going to do Thank you, brother. All right. Bill's a real thing. He's the real thing. And I love him. And he wants to give Bibles. And he wants to have a time when they're eating, they're going to have to stop and read the Word of God. Amen. So thank you so much. God bless you all for coming and being here today. Father, thank you and bless us as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.